We bring you the latest updates from the PNA Newsroom. The government is working to sustain the country's economic growth. In a meeting with the board members of the National Economic and Development Authority or NEDA, President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. discussed various projects funded through official development assistance as well as partnerships with the private sector. The discussion also covered other key matters for the growth and prosperity of the country's economic development in addition to NEDA's commitment to Marcos Directive. The President also met with San Ignacio Energy Resources Development Corporations for updates on the company's current 440-megawatt peak solar power project in Isabela. The company is installing more than 440 megawatts of solar photovoltaic and irrigation infrastructure in northern Luzon. It is expected to generate 18 billion pesos in investment and employ about 4,500 workers. Hundreds of patients were forced to evacuate from the Davao de Oro Provincial Hospital after it was damaged by the magnitude 6 earthquake. 90 patients will remain at the Monte Vista Sports Complex while the hospital is undergoing structural intensity assessment. Meanwhile, troops from the Army's 25th Infantry Battalion assisted in the transfer of 251 patients from the Davao de Oro Provincial Hospital to the designated evacuation center. Critical patients were transferred to the Davao Regional Medical Center in Tagum City, Davao del Norte, and others are also brought to Pantukan Town. The Provincial Information Office said Governor Dorothy Gonzaga visited the evacuation area and ensured that the patients are properly cared for. Gonzaga assured that there are enough doctors and nurses to take care of the patients. The provincial government has also installed a mini pharmacy for free medicines. The House Committee on Youth and Sports Development moved to consolidate at least seven bills that would institutionalize a policy that would prevent teenage pregnancies. The committee aims to push for a comprehensive measure that would make family planning methods accessible to sexually active minors. Committee Chair and Isabella Representative Faustino Michael D. III said that in 2019, the Philippines ranked second among Southeast Asian countries with the highest adolescent birth rate at 5.9% in girls aged 15 to 19. Laos ranked first at 6.33%. He also cited the 2020 World Study showing that the Philippines has 47 births annually for 1,000 women aged 15 to 19 years old. Albay Representative Ed Selagman meanwhile pointed out that adolescent pregnancies and childbirths account for the high rate of maternal mortality. Lagman said that teenage pregnancy situation is a national social emergency. He said a comprehensive law will institutionalize policies and strategies that would prevent adolescent pregnancy and protect adolescent mothers and their infants. Ride-hailing service firm Grab Holdings Incorporated has assured President R. Marcos Jr. that it would open job opportunities benefiting about 500,000 Filipinos. Malacanang said Grab Chief CEO and co-founder Anthony Tan made a commitment in a meeting with Marcos at Malacanang Palace in Manila on Thursday. Presidential Communications Office Secretary Chelo Garafil said Marcos and Grab executives discussed several initiatives for the modernization of the Philippine transportation system. Tan assured that Grab would find a way to create more jobs, not just in Metro Manila but also in other parts of the country including Davao, Cebu, and Iloilo. During the meeting, Marcos noted that his administration has been able to create nearly 2 million jobs since he took office in June 2022. The president said that Grab's proposal would also affect employment generation and would further decrease the country's unemployment rate. And that's the latest and the biggest stories from the PNA Newsroom. For more news content, visit our webpage or head on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. We are also shown on the social media pages of the Presidential Communications Office and Radio Pilipinas RP1. Stay tuned for more news updates. I'm Marita Muahe. We tell stories that inspire change.